welcome back to my channel. It has been a crazy few months since I've filmed. Um, my last video was, let me just check, uh, 37 weeks pregnant. That was uploaded a month ago. So, uh, um, yeah, so a month ago. Um, I have obviously given birth to our beautiful little boy. We have named him Remy Carter Sandy Prasad. Um, little Remy is extremely healthy. Uh, he was born on the 18th of March, 2021 at 7.25pm. Um, and he was 10 days early to, um, early, I guess, early with the, um, estimated due date. So his estimated due date was the 28th of March. I was 38 weeks pregnant, 38 weeks and four days, I think it was. It was on a Thursday. So, um, if you guys didn't know, this is my birth video, uh, my birth story, birth video, birth story. Um, and I'm going to also insert some images um, that my beautiful doula Ali took uh, during my birth. So Siraj has Remy right now. I've been meaning to film this for ages. I wanted to do it as quickly after the birth as possible because um, I wanted to, you know, have everything fresh in my mind. Um, but, you know, we've just kind of been in our bubble of love. Remy turned one month yesterday. Um, and then I also promised Instagram that I would have my birth story up. So, um, I plan to have this edited and uploaded today though. So, um, let's get into it. So, Siraj and I had planned a home birth. Uh, we planned it from about 16, 17 weeks. We booked our midwife, um, Rachel, who is absolutely amazing. Um... I will have all of those who assisted us in some way, um, all their names and their contact information, their website, um, down below in the description if you are a first time mum or if you are a mum, um, sorry, if you are expecting um, and you live in New South Wales or in Sydney, um, definitely check these people out because they were a tremendous help in um, my labour and obviously my delivery and all that stuff. So yeah, so we, I reached out to a couple of midwives, um, Rachel got back to me, I spoke to her, she came to our house all the way from, um, from, uh, I don't know if I want to reveal where she lives, um, so she, it takes an hour to get here, or maybe even a little bit more than that, um, so she does home visits, so she came to me, we spoke, um, me and Siraj definitely vibed with her. She understood our needs, um, our wants, and um, basically how we envisioned this birth. And we booked her pretty much um, the night of, I think. So we booked her at 20 weeks. Um, and we also had our two doulas, um, Ali and Talia from the Tamed the Tandem Birthing Co. Again, all information is down below in the description box. Um, and they were absolutely amazing. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention, I did do uh, Illuminate Yoga, uh, a prenatal, a six week prenatal yoga class with Amanda Vella at Illuminate, uh, which is in the western suburbs of Sydney. Um, and I did that fairly early on, uh, it was around 20 weeks I think, and um, so six consecutive weeks and she really really instilled this power in me that I never knew I had. She, you know, kind of just helped me get rid of all my fears. It wasn't just a yoga class, like it was so much more than that. Um, 75 minutes of just inspiration like she is such an inspiration when it comes to birth and um the whole process of of labor and things like that obviously there was yoga involved uh which really helped me during uh, which really helped me kind of pick my positioning um when i gave birth 
Um, so yeah, I just wanted to shout out to Amanda Vella uh, at Illuminate Yoga as well because she definitely had a hand in helping me um, overcome my fears when it came to birth. Um, I, Siraj and I also took a hypnobirthing class with Tina Pullen um, and again Western Sydney, Western suburbs of Sydney um, and she helped us so much. Uh, we learned so much with Tina and that class. Um, Siraj picked up a whole bunch of it and he was the best support person during my labour. So 100% if you are after a positive calm birth um, definitely definitely look into hypnobirthing Australia and um, see what courses are running around your area. I just wanted to quickly mention those two before jumping in. So, um, so yes, I gave birth on the 18th, the night before, so the night of the 17th of March, um, <clears throat> at around 11 o'clock. So we had already gone to bed. At around 11 o'clock, I woke up to, like, really, um, uncomfortable period, um, cramps. Um, it did kind of keep me awake for a little bit, but... Um, I wasn't too bothered about it and I didn't think much of it because I had started to kind of get a little bit of Braxton Hicks contractions, um, I think two weeks before, uh, very, very like minimal. I didn't get Braxton Hicks till like very late in my pregnancy. Yeah, so it was about 11 o'clock, I went to the bathroom and then I came back and then I just went to sleep. Um, at about 1.20, um, I woke up to wetness um, and I got out of bed and as soon as I stood a lot of water started trickling down my legs it wasn't a gush it was just very heavy trickling though and I kind of just froze and I was like oh my god because um, the conversation that I had with Mer uh, with Rachel before was when do I call you and she said don't call me when your water breaks because that's usually quite late in um, in labor so just text me when you lose your mucus plug which is pretty common like the, the common thing to happen is so you will lose your mucus plug and then um, 24 48 hours later uh, labor will start to progress for me however and obviously birth is so unpredictable um, you can't really um, you can't really know for sure what's going to happen so um, Rachel just kind of gave me what would generally happen and then obviously I would have to follow my instincts and, and know when to reach out to her anyways 120 stood up water was trickling out and I was like and I was just in shock and I froze and I was like holy shit this is my water's breaking so I was like to Siraj I was like babe babe and he is such a deep sleeper so I had to call him a few times and he kind of woke up in like a shock and I was like my water broke and he it's so funny because it looked like he was going to get up to go somewhere but like maybe he hadn't forgotten that we were having a home birth um it looked like he was you know ready to go to the hospital <laughs> But, um, and I don't know why I woke him up like that. I wish I hadn't because it wasn't that big of a deal. I wasn't getting contractions. Um, my water just broke and like, there was just water everywhere. So, um, I was like, let me just go to the bar. Oh, let me just call Rachel. So I called Rachel at 1.20 and I felt really bad because it was like in the middle of the night. But my water's broke so I just had to. I called Rachel and I was like, Rachel, my water just broke. And she was so shocked. She was like, oh, okay. Are you getting contractions? And I said, no. And she said, try and get as much rest as you can from now. Um, because tomorrow, well, you know, in a few hours, things are probably going to start um, progressing. So I went to the bathroom, cleaned myself up, put a pad on um, just to see um, the color of my waters. Um, make sure that there was no um, meconium or anything like that. And that was also when I realized that my mucus plug had started to come out. Um, it didn't come out in like a like a huge thing. It was just kind of like a little bit. So I went to bed and um, 
I started to kind of obsess with timing my contractions, which I shouldn't have because I should have been resting. So I was getting contractions, I think it was like every 15 minutes and they were super light, just like a very light period cramp. Um, and then, yeah, so I was just kind of timing it um, up until about 5 a.m. Uh, Siraj's alarm for his work went off and I told him, I was like, babe, you're going to have to call your boss and tell him, you know, it's, it's going to happen. Like, there's no way you can go to work. So 5 a.m. we kind of woke up. I went to the bathroom, came back and from 5 a.m. to about 8 a.m. Uh, Siraj and I slept pretty solidly. I didn't wake up. Um, I think I may have woken up a few times for some contractions. But anyways, so 8 a.m. we woke up, went outside. Um, and Siraj started to put up my fairy lights and, um, we watched some, we watched Step Brothers. Oh, what was the other movie? We watched another funny movie and then we were about to watch Happy Gilmore. Um, and during this time my contractions were kicking in. Uh, we were about to watch Happy Gilmore, but my contractions were starting to just um turn up just a little bit so i uh, i couldn't concentrate on watching the movie so i was um on my couch facing the like facing the opposite direction on how you would sit on a couch on all fours leaning like kind of like this um and we were timing contractions and and the only reason we were timing contractions was to give our midwife and our doulas an indication of when to come um and I was on the phone to Rachel a couple of times and she um, could hear in my voice that I was able to still speak through my contractions. I called my mum and let her know and thank God she had that day off. <laughs> so she was at the shops already and she had, no actually she had called me and asked me if I wanted anything to eat. And I was like, oh mum my borders broke last night and she's like, oh okay, well I'm just gonna go to Costco. <laughs> <laughs> um, her and my auntie and my uncle they went to the shops they went to Costco and they bought some food for us brought it over and um, me and Suraj ate a little bit thank god because that was about maybe one o'clock in the afternoon um, and then from then to when I gave birth I didn't eat again um, yeah so we ate and then we just kept on going with the contractions at about two o'clock, my doulas came. Um, I asked them to get me coconut water and Gatorade. And honestly, the coconut water was the best thing ever because um, they put it in a cup with a straw, ice, and it was just so nice to have something sweet um, while going through these contractions. So the first position was on the couch, the second position I was on knees on the floor on some towels and my body was on um, an ottoman and I was facing my affirmations which honestly I didn't really pay attention to, I couldn't really see, I couldn't really read them because I didn't have my glasses on but I did have a photo of me, my mum and her mum, my grandma. Well, oh, it's getting a little bit emotional. <laughs> Um, so, oh, sorry guys, so that image was in between my affirmations and I do remember looking at them. Um, anyways, after my mum had dropped off food, she had gone home, um, and then later on at about three, my dad drove her over, um, and she... Uh, started to help me like kind of massage me. Suraj did the best job of um, massaging me. He made sure I was hydrated. So my doulas made, uh, did a really good job of keeping both of us hydrated, keeping both of us um, just like if we needed anything they were there. Um, so my jewels were really, really on point with focusing on both of us, whereas Siraj was just spot on with focusing and paying attention to me. Um, so he helped me with light touch, anchor touch. If you do hypnobirthing, you'll know these languages, um, but just basically supporting me um, mentally and physically as well. So I was starting to 
at about 1 p.m. onwards, the contractions were like ramped up and I was starting to make noises, just really low noise. Well, actually, I think at first they were quite high pitched and then Suraj was like low, you know, if you're going to moan, moan low, um, which was so great because it slips my mind. Like it didn't even occur to me to do that. Um, so from here, it, my memory gets a little fuzzy, um, especially with the timing. So I'm not too sure. Um, I'm just kind of going off what Suraj has told me and what I kind of remember. From that position, we went into the shower with the um, Swiss ball. So I was sitting on the Swiss ball in the shower, hot water running. Hot water was amazing on my back. Um, oh, also, um, before I went into the shower, I had a TENS machine on the whole time. Um, burst, just constantly had the burst going every time I had a contraction. But the TENS machine was amazing. Um, so, yeah, so we were in the shower, you know, um, I was on the Swiss ball. I was on all fours. Um, at one stage, I looked like a gorilla, like, you know, with my, like, fists in the floor of the shower um at one stage i was in kind of like a half squat which is something that amanda from yoga had taught us um and then for the most part i was standing i had my arms on suraj and we were just swaying um through contractions and we were in the shower for quite a while um and then rachel rocked up at about 4 p.m or 4 30 i think it was um, as soon as she came, you know, it was the best to see another familiar face. Um, so Rachel came in, sweeter smile, um, didn't talk much at all, came in with the um, fetal heart Doppler, fetal heart Doppler, the Doppler, <laughs> and she was just monitoring the heartbeat. Um, everything was fine, because well, I assumed it was fine, because she just kind of walked away um, and then just left us there to do our thing. So, yeah, so we're in there for a while, and then from the shower, I think we went into the birthing pool, but we were in the shower for a while, I think, maybe like an hour, um, and then we went into the pool, and the pool, as soon as I got in, I just was like, oh, like it was so relaxing and warm and the lights were off and my fairy lights were on and it was just such a mood um and everyone was kind of quiet i think i mean i don't really remember but um i feel like it was quiet um i went into the birth pool lied down and i think i was it felt like maybe 15 minutes but i was just so relaxed and it didn't even occur to me until my doula and Suraj told me afterwards, like a few days after, that when I was in the pool, my contractions just completely slowed down. And I don't think I even, I think I had maybe one in 15 minutes. Um, so there's also another thing. I didn't get any um, vaginal exams. So I didn't know how dilated I was um, throughout the entirety of my labor. So I was in the pool, um, Rachel could see that I was just way too relaxed and my contractions weren't coming on. So she suggested we go into the bedroom and um, for me to lie on my side and prop one of my legs up onto um, the pregnancy pillow, which I still have and I still use. <laughs> um, I use it to feed uh, Remy. Anyways, so um, that position, like getting out of the pool was just such a bitch. Like I didn't want to move, um, but I, I just, I just did what they asked me to do um, because I knew that they knew best. Anyway, so Rachel was like, go into the um, bedroom. So we went into the bedroom. The doulas had set up everything, you know, um, all of like after we got out of the shower they had a spare change of clothes for us like they went into our closet and just got whatever they could spare change of clothes they made our bed um so it was neat and there was no um i think they had put down the plastic and all that stuff like everything was done it was amazing um we didn't have to worry about any of that stuff um i did we were kind of worried at the state of our bedroom <laughs> It was quite messy um but anyways so i got into the bed and i'm guessing around now it was about 6 30 maybe 
maybe 6.45, almost 7 o'clock uh, in the evening. So I had lied there with my leg up on, uh, propped up on the pillow. Um, so there was once in the pool where I had wanted the gas. Unfortunately, uh, my midwife had a can of, um, what is it, like whatever it is, nitro, nitro trick oxide um but it was empty and she had one at home so i mean i'm not too mad at that i was pretty like pissed off in the moment but i didn't show it all um i could hear how sorry she was when she was talking to siraj about it but i was like all right i guess we're doing this completely like no no pain relief except for the tens machine um when i was in bed i was like can I get water uh, sterile injections, which is these two um, injections of saline, really, really tiny amount of saline injected into the back. Um, and that's supposed to help with back labor. And I had immense back labor. Hence, I used the shit out of the TENS machine. Um, so, so yeah, so I asked my doulas to go and talk to Rachel and be like, can she get the water sterile injections? And at this moment, I was like really annoyed because like no one was kind of telling me um, if I could get it. And it wasn't until afterwards that I understood why they were kind of just letting me just kind of write it out a little bit. It was because I was going to give birth like 15 minutes later. So um, my doulas came back and told me, you know, they just want... Um, baby to be in like the best position um they don't want to give me the injections because it's just going to be too much of an effort for me to get down on my knees on the floor I have to stay still um and then have two midwives give me the injection so it was just a lot of effort especially seeing how close I was to actually giving birth I didn't know how close I was to giving birth so I was like give me the freaking injection so didn't get the water sterile injection sterile water injections um anyway so i had moved from on my side to on all fours on the bed um with like my butt like just completely up um and my shoulders down so i was like arched like this so my head was here and my butt was up here um and we were just trying to get um baby into the best position possible um i think he was I think his face was, uh, okay, so I think his back was to my back, which means, uh, which would account for all the back labor. Anyway, so after that, um, Rachel had suggested that I go into the bathroom, sit on the toilet, and I was like, all right, I want a pillow on, you know, the back of the toilet so I can lean against it and I'm going to sit backwards on the toilet. So I sat backwards on the toilet. When I was on bed, on the bed, I had already started to feel urges of pushing. So there was, I think maybe three or four contractions where I had started to kind of push already, but I didn't say anything. Um, I think they knew, I think Rachel knew. She could hear my voice. She could hear the, the groaning and the moaning. And um, there was one stage where I was on the bed and I was saying, um, in my head, I was kind of thinking, should we just go to the hospital like this? I think hurt so much. Like, let's just go to the hospital. Um, that was what I was thinking in my head. Out loud, I said to the doors, I can't do this. And they said, you got this, you can do it. Suraj was flawless in his support. He was saying all the right things. Um, he even like remembered some of, some of my affirmations and said them to me, which just shocked me. I was like, holy shit, like you really paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had no doubt that he was going to be the best support person, but in the moment I was like, oh wow. Anyway, so I moved to the bathroom and Suraj said it was maybe 10 minutes later that I gave birth to his head. So I was on the toilet and I had urges, really strong urges to just let my body push. So my body was pushing and then I reached down and I could feel the top of his head or like his head um and in my head I could even visualize it it was the weirdest thing um 
so yeah so I reached down and I touched it and I could feel his head and I was like oh thank the effing lord he's almost here like at this stage I was like game on we're gonna do it it's gonna happen he's gonna be here any minute now um so I felt it and then he kind of went back up and then I had another contraction and uh he was crowning I don't remember feeling the ring of fire I felt a little sting um but it wasn't too bad um but yeah so he was crowning I, and I kept my my hand there just to kind of guide myself um to kind of push him out or breathe him out and as his head was being worn my head my hand just kind of cradled his head as he came out and when I um as I was doing this or a minute before his head fully came out um Siraj had gone to feed Otis <laughs> weirdest timing I know but he had um popped off to go feed Otis and he was like to my mum, oh, come and just rub her back. And I think my mum was kind of a little bit in shock to see her daughter in so much pain as any parent would be. So she was just kind of there and she was like rubbing my back. And she's very aggressive <laughs> in the way that she would touch and rub me. But anyways, um, so yeah, it was just my mum. And then Siraj came back and I had birthed his head. Um, and apparently I made a very loud noise because all of the, so there were two midwives. Rachel and the assistant midwife Kira and then there were my two daughters and they were outside so in the bedroom it was just me my mum and Suraj. Suraj had come back from feeding Otis um, and as I was birthing his head I made a very very primal um, sounds uh, and the doulas and the midwives were like oh it's happening we need to get in there so um, and, and when I had his head out I was it occurred to me that it was just me and Siraj and my mum was kind of standing a bit further back but I had realized my midwife wasn't there she kind of just let us do our own thing which was probably the best thing for us um, but then in like a second of thinking that she was right behind me and she said okay now I want you to slowly you know get onto the ground onto your knees um, so, you know, I was on the toilet and I had a head in between my legs and I was slowly, um, kind of kneeling on the floor. I almost thought that I was going to squish Remy's head, or like sit on his head. Um, but I got onto the floor and Siraj was behind me and I heard Rachel say, do you want to catch him? And he was like, yeah. So, um, I had another contraction came and I just... He just came out along with like a like a gash of just liquid and blood and all that stuff. And Siraj caught him. I knew I was going to get emotional <laughs> at this part especially. Um, so Siraj caught him from behind and Rachel said, okay, Siraj is going to pass him through your legs. Um, and just grab him. So I grabbed him and it was, it was the best feeling. Whew. Okay, so, whew, so emotional. It was the most emotional I had ever felt in my entire life. It was like literally this of emotions. It was insane. I had him on my chest and I remember screaming, I'm not screaming, but saying very loudly like, oh my god, I didn't think you were going to come. Thank you so much for coming out. Anyways, I said a bunch of stuff that I don't remember, but I was just rambling on because there was just so much hormones going on in my body when Remy came out and it was the most amazing thing because the pain just stopped. <laughs> it just stopped. Um... So yeah, so Remy was on me, you know, um, my bleeding was uh, pretty okay, it wasn't too bad at all. Um, and then from there we made our way to the pool and um, uh, I had Remy with me in the pool for about, I felt like maybe like half an hour maybe. And that was when Siraj fed me a banana and there's a photo of it, which I'll show you now. <laughs> um, 
but yeah it was the most amazing experience that I have ever 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 had and um, no doubt with our second pregnancy and you know for any future pregnancies like we will be planning a home birth because I cannot imagine moving from here to there to wherever in the comfort of a hospital after being in the pool um, and yeah so we we were in the pool and we let the umbilical cord um, go white uh, and then we moved to the bedroom um, and Saraj and I and Remy got into bed um, the cord had not been cut yet uh, the placenta had not yet been delivered either so um, from when I birthed Remy 7.25 to when we got into bed it was about an hour and a half yeah so I had a physiological third stage of labor which was great um, I delivered the placenta and Rachel and Kira the second midwife uh, assessed it and it was all good and then yes yeah, Saraj she cut the umbilical cord Rachel tied it um, with a cute little like woven knitted uh, what are they called like the cord ties and and yeah and that was that um, and then yeah and we were just in bed um, he did the nipple crawl he started to breastfeed um, and it was just all amazing we had um, pizza at like 10 o'clock and it was let me tell you that pizza was the bomb it tasted so good um, yeah my mum was there as well and it was just like it was just crazy like I'm so proud of us for taking the chance um, and doing the research and having this experience um, so all of the photos that I've shown were taken by Ali she is one of the doulas and she is um, starting her own photography business um, in the whole birthing in like the birthing world um, so I will also leave her details below as well thank you so much Ali um, thank you to my doulas, to my midwives, to my mum and obviously to Siraj for the support that I have gotten throughout my pregnancy, throughout the birth and postpartum. Um, also, I did not tear. Um, I had a little bit of grazing that healed up quite well. Um, obviously swelling and my bleeding has pretty much stopped um, after a week two um, I had like a tiny bit of like you know bleeding um, in the third week and then it's pretty much just all done um, and yeah so everything was pretty much to what we had expected and we didn't expect much from like we just wanted a home birth I didn't mind if it was in the pool or not in the pool I didn't think that I would give birth in the toilet but um, gravity does wonders especially when it comes to birth so um, that was a little surprising but you know I have no shame <laughs> in letting Remy know when he's older that you know I gave birth to your head over the toilet um, but yeah honestly it was the most amazing thing in the world um, if you have any questions about home birth pop them down below and I'm happy to answer them um, but yeah it has been absolutely amazing seeing Remy um, grow and, and thrive over the past four weeks there's a long road to go um, but we are super excited uh, about it all and we cannot wait to see what he has in store for us um, but yeah I'm I'm excited let me know if you guys want um, any other videos about like breastfeeding or um, yeah postpartum and things like that I, I definitely will do a postpartum video I just don't know when um, but yeah 
thank you guys so much i hope you enjoyed my birth story um and i will see you in my next video hopefully very 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 soon um and yeah thank you guys